So tomorrow, I'm gonna go to Austin, which is right here. And then from there, we're going to take a plane ride and we're going all the way to Florida over here. We're gonna be right here, the Everglades. And we're gonna fly back to San Antonio, which is right here. And then from there, we're going to take the bus and we're gonna go to Uvalde. And then we're gonna come back home. So geology, they, it's like the study of rocks. And when I go to that trip, I'm gonna be experiencing that and I'm gonna get to you know, put my hands on it and kind of feel what a geologist does. And I'm gonna get a lot of knowledge when I come back and hopefully teach you too, so you can know everything, okay? Yeah. Being here in Eagle Pass, you don't experience a lot of things. So going actually around the world, I'm really excited. And I actually thought I wasn't gonna get in. 200 students were nominated and applied to Geoforce and to be one of the chosen ones, it was pretty exciting. I was thinking I was something right here in Texas, but now that they told me that it was in Florida, I got nervous and more because she's gonna get on a plane. Since she started kinder, she always make honor rolls. She always strives to do her best. And we're very proud of her. And she has wings, she can fly. I was born and raised in New Valley. So this will be a new experience for me. My goal is for a career is chemical engineering. But now that I have this opportunity to go to Florida, then I have a new feeling towards my career path that I could be a geologist or a geoscientist. He is very blessed to be accepted in this. I think he would love GeoForce because I feel that it's something that's going to help him grow up and realize that there's a big old world out there than just here. This is a journey for you that you're gonna remember for a lifetime. And you'll be seeing me for the next four years and we'll be seeing you. And it's all gonna wind up that you're gonna be with the rest of the geoforcers who are out there at colleges and universities across the country, not just in Texas. You're gonna learn a lot, but have fun. Be on your toes. Um, we're really proud of you. Congratulations. So how was it? It was fun and exciting. I wasn't nervous at all. It's such a huge transition going from the comforts of your small town or your small middle school to this big wide world. I can tell people have been doing their reading. I can tell people are studying. I'm gonna come down and start asking you questions. These barrier islands change a lot, right? If they had a really nice, solid limestone bedrock, do you think they'd change quite as much? No, they would have a rocky bedrock. But in this case, if you mostly have sand, then sand can move and change. We're going to be going straight down this road until we take a right. There's going to be a T. Uh -huh. We'll take a right and uh, then we'll go down that road for some distance to get to North Beach. Let's get off the bus and uh, get that uh, sunscreen on. Over the course of the first week, even in Geoforce, they're asked to behave as college students in many ways. They learn how to study. They push themselves, and they gain that independence. Yeah, take your, put your stuff down, and uh, let's see what we uh, dig into. Well, yeah, right here. Yeah, here, come look at that. We're going to dig down and see the different layers of sand in the back beach to see if we can distinguish how the beach moved. And then we're going to sample the different layers to see how the grain size changes and see what else we can learn. 
What we're doing is we're mapping out the topography of the beach. So we're looking at the swash zone right here, which is where the water is washing up and down the forebeach. We're going to then map how the elevation changes from the water up to the berm, the back beach, and then through the dunes. We want to make sure that this line is super tight. So we want to keep it as tight as possible. You guys are also going to make sure that these bubbles are all in those little black lines. So you guys are basically going to leapfrog up the beach. All right, and we're going to keep getting those measurements. Melissa, you're doing awesome. Thank you very much for being willing to get your feet wet. A typical day is just not typical. It's, it's just jam-packed full of information. They're going to take us to so many beach stops. The kids will learn how to do beach profiling, but they actually understand the erosion process and how dunes are built and what's the difference in the measurement of the landscape. Which way did the orange go? Did it come directly towards shore in a straight line? This environment is always going to be changing. The sand is going to be moving. What's happening in the wave? is that the energy is going through the water. So the water, all it's doing is moving up and down. Longshore drift is another exercise we do so that they can understand the tides. We'll do some shell collecting. We're going to be taking samples of beach sand. And being out in the field, you'd be surprised how well these ninth graders are understanding college concepts. They're responsible for their group doing well, too, for their own success. And so that's a really good skill to learn is, is collaboration and teamwork. You never have to tell them to study because they're already in the good habit of it. And every day is a new stop. Every day is a new learning experience. And uh, they always take something away from it at the end of the day. I just want to say, you guys kicked but once again, we have all A averages for the groups. Woo! Give yourself a round of applause. That's a huge deal. The process is just amazing to see things and the gears start turning and clicking. Amazing questions that they ask, so incredibly bright. Progressively, they get more and more in tune with each other, more trusting, more social. This socialization is vital for their success in college because a college is a huge step. And from a small town, it can be very scary. And I think we've, we've conquered that battle, and I think we're preparing them. It's really cool to understand the world around us. And as we were flying, we flew over the Colorado River. And I had many, many students say, I saw the cut bank in the point bar. Oh, I was able to see a big meander. They're already making those observations. That feeling of empowerment and of knowing what's going on around you sticks around. Towards the end of the week now, you get to see how the kids all interact together. And usually at the end, the last night, is when they have their little fiesta. So they actually did their line dancing and you know everybody everybody's engaged. So from the point of not being engaged to being engaged, I think it was a successful trip. They will be going next year to the Grand Canyon. The following year they will be going to Oregon to study volcanoes. And their last year they will study the Appalachians in Washington, DC. So they're still going to travel the country. As young people, experiences shape us in our future. And I asked last night how many want to be geologists, and a lot of hands went up. So I was really happy to see that. 25 of our 42 kids, they've already said, oh yeah, I'm going to be a geologist. They never would have thought about that before, never. We are going to face a huge shortage of geoscientists within the next 15 years. And so I would love to see students all over the country have, have the opportunities that we see right now in GeoForce. I wish I'd had this opportunity when I was in high school. So absolutely, I hope that it spreads throughout the country. And I have a great deal of confidence that it will. So now that the trip ended, I did change my mind about what I want to become. I want to become a geologist. 
It was amazing. I learned a lot of new things and I hope to keep on learning more.